This video will start in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Well, actually the video has started already five seconds ago, but that's exactly what we will build. Countdown timer for PowerPoint. Watch the video till the end and you'll be able to create a bar style timer, a stopwatch timer. And if you prefer digits, we'll do that too. We'll create a short countdown and a 15 minutes timer. You'll be able to use what we do together to launch a presentation as I did in my video right now. Or if you want your audience to do a timed exercise, or if you want to display the duration of a coffee break and let your audience know how much time they have left before they have to come back. Well, I see maybe you need a timer, but you don't want to invest the time to create one. Well, I have a gift for you. All the timers that you see in this video can be downloaded by clicking on the links that you see in the description below. Completely free. You're welcome. So you have the option to close this video and download the files. But please, before you do that, click on the subscribe button. Or you can watch the videos and learn how I did the files. Then download them and be able to customize them as you wish. The video is divided in chapters. So if you're interested in one specific type of timer, just go to that section. Three, two, one, let's go. Let's start with the simplest type of timer, the bar style one. It doesn't show digits, so in a way it's less aggressive, less stressful for those who see it. That may be useful if you're running an exercise and you don't want to stress your audience with that feeling of clock ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock. We'll create five bars that will disappear one after the other for a total of five minutes. At the end, we'll insert some text saying time's up. So let's focus on the first slide of the three that you see here. I've taken a picture from the free stock images that you find in the insert menu in PowerPoint. And I've already built and positioned five rectangular shapes, to which I've assigned colors from red to green. There are two important tabs that we should open when creating timers. The first one is the Selection tab. You'll find it by going to Home, then Select, and then Selection pane. This tab shows all the objects that you have on your slide that are arranged in layers. Having it at hand will allow us to quickly select objects. Another important advice is to name the objects on your slide. It's time well invested as it will save you a lot of troubles afterwards. So let's rename each rectangle to the number of minutes it corresponds to. 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Let's now add the animations. Click on the Animation tab, then Add Animation and let's add a Wipe animation. By default the fading goes from bottom top but we can change it by going to Effect Options and selecting right to left. We can control the duration of the animation here. That means we can choose how long it will take for the whole bar to disappear. Since we're building a five minutes timer, each bar should disappear in one minute. But if we insert a 60 second value, you'll notice that the maximum duration is 59 seconds. We can fix this by adding a delay of one second. That means that when we click, the bar will start disappearing after one second, and it will take 59 seconds to completely disappear. Altogether, that makes one minute. Now that we've created the animation for the first bar, it's very simple to create it for the other ones. That's easily done by clicking on Animation Painter. This will copy the animation of one object and paste it to another one. The second important pane I was referring to before is the animation pane. That will give us full control on the timeline and the possibility to adjust the sequence of events. So now we have two animations. They're both starting on click. However, we want the four minutes bar to start disappearing after the five minutes one. So let's select it, right click and select start after previous. Let's copy the animation and paste it to the three other bars. To make the timer clearer, we can insert a number in each bar, corresponding to the appropriate minute, and that will be 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. We now want to build the Time's Up text. Let's open again the Animations tab and add a Zoom Entrance animation. The text should appear after the last bar has disappeared, so let's right-click and again select Start after Previous. In the Effect options, we can make it repeat three times. That's a bit too fast for my taste. So let's go back to the options of the animation and select a duration for the animation of one second. That looks good to me. Let's try whether it works. I've fast forwarded the video, but the timer works. Great, well done. If you like this bar timer, just download it by clicking in the link in the description below. 
A variation of the bar style timer is the stopwatch timer. It's built exactly as the previous timer, just with another type of animation. We'll be working with the wheel animation and mimic a stopwatch. We'll do a three minutes countdown, but obviously you can extend it to as long as you want. I'm using the same background slide as before. Now, instead of bars, I have created three circles. One green, one orange and one red. Name all the circles appropriately in the selection pane and center align them. In order to work on a specific circle, you can hide the other ones by clicking on the little eye icon. Let's now add exit animations to the circles. To mimic the clock effect, we'll use the wheel animation. Actually, when time's up, I want a white circle to appear. So let me create a new circle by duplicating the green one. Let's fill it with white color and let's rename it. I'll drag it underneath the red circle, as this is the last one that I want to appear. Let's now fix the timeline. First, we want the green circle to disappear, then the orange one should start after the previous animation, and in the same way, the red should disappear after the orange one. We don't need any animation on the white one, so let's delete this one. Let's center align all circles and try it out. It looks nice. The Time's Up text is the same that we've created in the previous timer. Let's reposition everything. Now let's add a stopwatch. Go to Insert, Icons, and this one is good. Let's resize it and center it with the circles. Here we can select the duration of the animation, that is the time that each circle will take to disappear. Maximum duration is 59 seconds though, so if we want each circle to represent one minute, we need to add a one second delay. Let's give it an additional touch by adding numbers. A 3, a 2 and a 1. We'll make them white and place them in the middle of the stopwatch. We want the numbers to disappear too, following the exact same pattern of the circle. So let's go to one circle, click on Animation Painter and paste the animation on the number. We want the number to start disappearing at the same time as the circle. So let's make sure we select Start with Previous. I'll now create the 2 and 1 number and use the Animation Painter to paste the animation. Let me rename the objects and sort them in the right order. When a circle disappears, I don't want to see the number that is underneath it. To avoid it, I'll insert an entrance animation to numbers 2 and 1 that will start at the same time as their exit animation. And let's test it. Again, I've speeded it up, but it works perfect. If you like this timer, give me a thumb up and download it by clicking on the link in the description below. If you were looking for timers showing digits, the next three timers are for you. The first one is a quick single digit countdown. The second one is built in exactly the same way as the previous one, but with many more digits, in order to create a long countdown. The third timer does exactly what the first and the second one do. But instead of having to build animations, the timer is created with Visual Basic code, and it's executed by running a macro in PowerPoint. The good news is that that macro is already written for you, so you won't need to do anything besides downloading the file and watching my instructions on how to run the macro. I haven't written the macro myself, but I found it at this link that you also find in the description. So thanks a lot to General So who wrote this macro for us. The first one is a single digit timer that, for example, you can use to start your presentation. Again, I've taken the background image for this slide by choosing one of the free stock photos that you can find by clicking in the Insert tab. We create a timer that counts down from 9. So you may or may not include the first three zero digits as we will add animations only to the last one. Let's have the animation and the selection panes open. If you don't know how to do it, just check the first chapter of this video. And let's rename the objects that we have on the slide. I'll call each digit 0 second, 0 0 second, 0 minute and 0 0 minute respectively. Now we need to count down from 9. Let's copy the 0 and paste it 9 times. And let's rename each object appropriately. This is where the selection pane comes very handy. If you have multiple objects one above each other, you can hide them by clicking on the eye icon. So let's insert all the digits and give the appropriate name to the corresponding object. I needed two digits more, so let's add them. Let's make them all visible and align them. It's now time to insert the animations. The first digit is the 9. We'll make each digit appear with an appear animation and exit with a fade animation. Each entrance and exit animation will last half a second each, for a total of one second. 
and the exit animation for each digit should start when the entrance animation of the same digit has ended. We can achieve that, for example, by making the animation start with the previous one with a delay of half a second. Let's use again the selection pane and select one by one all digits. Let's use the animation painter and copy animation from digit 9 and paste it to digit 8. And if you wish, you can also add an entrance animation for the first three zero digits that will start together with the 9 animation. Let's repeat the process for all the digits. Well, actually, for this short countdown, I prefer not having the first three digits. So let me delete them and make the other digits bigger. Excellent! If you love this timer, go down in the description and download the file. Let's now create a long countdown with digits. Something that we can use, for example, for a coffee break. Or to let people know how much time they have before the meeting will start. The background image is again taken from the free stock images that you can find and download by clicking on the Insert tab in PowerPoint. If in the previous timer we only needed one digit, now to build a 15 minutes timer we need all four. The concept is exactly the same as we've seen for the previous timer. Let's start by creating the first minute countdown. So let's add a 1 in the first slide and then duplicate the slide. Now it's very important to have the selection pane open as we will be working with many digits. Also name all digits accordingly as this will save you a lot of troubles. So when going from 1 minute to 59 seconds, there are three digits that need to change. The one has to become a zero, then the first zero has to become a five, and the second zero has to become a nine. So let's add an animation to one and make it disappear with a fade animation. Let's select the one, click on Animation Painter, and paste the animation to the last two zeros. All these three digits will have to disappear simultaneously, so the animations will have to start with the previous one. We also want this animation to start immediately as the slide becomes active, so the first animation, instead of start on click, should start with previous. That will make it start as the slide becomes active. Now how can we move automatically from the first slide that displays 1 minute to the second one that displays 59 seconds? Let's select the second slide, go to Transitions, then deselect on mouse click and instead select After. And let's leave 0 there. Ok, good. Let's now work on the last two digits. For the seconds, we have already built the animation in the previous timer. So what I'll do? I'll just copy the 9 digits with their animations and paste it to this slide. Let's make them white, resize them and position them well. And let's now build the animation that will display a 5. For convenience, I'm taking the first zero digit that has no animation and duplicate it. Position it above the other zero and change the text from 0 to 5. Let's add an appear animation to the 5. And if we now look at the timeline, this animation has been inserted at the bottom of it. However, we want the 5 to appear immediately after the 0 has disappeared. So let's bring this animation up and let's make it start after previous. So as soon as the 0 is gone, then the 5 will appear and it will take half a second for it to appear. When the 5 appears, also the 9 has to appear. So let's click on the 9 and select Start with Previous. And let's now take care of the minutes. We've already inserted the animation that makes the 1 disappear. Now we have to insert the 0 and make it appear immediately after the 1 has disappeared, at the exact same time when the 5 and the 9 are appearing. Let's add an Appear animation, bring it up and make it start after Previous. We've already worked on all the digits corresponding to the seconds in the previous timer, so they should all work well. Let's review what we've done. The 1, the 0 and the 0 are disappearing at the same time. Immediately after the 0, the 5 and the 9 appear. Now the 0 and the 5 will stay the same for all the duration of this slide, but the 9 will disappear, then the 8 will appear and then disappear, then the 7, the 6 and so on. And let's give it a try. Great, that works. Great, we've done the most difficult part. Now it's just a matter of copy-pasting the slides and adapting the digits. So let's duplicate the slide, 
and work on the seconds that go from 49 to 40. The only thing that we need to adjust is removing the one as this digit remains zero throughout the duration of the slide. And then we replace the five with the four and the zero with the five. Make sure you work on the same text boxes as these already have the appropriate animation linked to them. And let's repeat the same thing for 30, 20 and 10 seconds. Great, we've now built a one minute countdown timer. Now you can add as many minutes as you want. Just copy all slides and paste them on top of the one minute. You'll only have to change the one minute to two minutes in the initial slide and then adjust the previous one that was changing to zero to two minutes that now should change to one. It's just a matter of changing the numbers. All the animations will stay the same. I noticed that in order to have seconds playing correctly from one slide to the other, we need to add a half a second delay to the first animation. So it's quite long and a bit of a pain to create such a timer. But the good news is that I've done it for you. So if you like it, just go down in the description and click on the links to download it. I've actually made three versions of the presentation. A 5 minutes, a 10 minutes and a 15 minutes timer. And let's now move to the last and most elegant way of creating a timer. That is with writing Visual Basic code and running a macro. If you're not familiar with Visual Basic, that may sound scary. However, the code has already been written for us and you can find it at this link. In order to copy paste the code and run a macro, you need to have the developer tab active. To do so, go to PowerPoint options and then click on Customize ribbon. On the right, tick on Developer. Now you see that the Developer tab appeared on your menu. Here you'll find Visual Basic, Macro, Macro Security and other functions. So let's click on Macros and let's give it a name. Let's call it Timer. And then select Macro N and the name of your presentation. Click on Create and now this tab will appear. You can copy the code from the website or from my description below and then save the file. You see that you will have to save the file in a format that enables macros. Well, there are two options in the code. One that makes the seconds count up and one for counting seconds down. The default code is for a duration of 3 minutes. Well, here you see that the duration is set to 120 seconds. So adapt this number to the number that you wish. Then if you want to use the countdown, delete the part that says for i equals 0 to i duration step i step and just leave the part of the macro for the countdown. OK, let's insert a text box with four digits. So that's a simple text box with no animation. So now select the text box, go to the Developer tab and click on Macros. Select the macro that you've just created and click on Run. And voila! The macro has built a timer for you. We've built a 3 minutes countdown timer in no time. Let's make it bigger and white. And here we go. If you like this timer, download the file in the description below. The macro is already in there for you. Just make sure you enable the Developer tab and then if you need to adapt the duration of the timer, edit the macro and change the number of seconds from 120 to the desired number. You'll then have to delete the existing text, add again the four digits and run the macro again. I hope you found this video useful. Please now subscribe in 3, 2, 1, now. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to produce other PowerPoint videos. What you can do for you right now is to watch these next two videos. First one is on how to create an engaging PowerPoint presentation. And the second one is on how to use a timer on Zoom with the new Zoom app. If you're not seeing it yet, I'll make it very soon, no worries. See you in my next digital tip.